guys, welcome back to video review number 11. In this review we're going to be taking a look at the Acer Aspire E5-551-T374 15.6 inch laptop. This laptop comes equipped with an AMD A10 7300 APU. Its base clock is at 1.9 GHz but can turbo up to 3.2 GHz for its turbo clock. The GPU accompanied with this is the AMD R6 and the core clock of that is 533 MHz with the memory clock of 800 MHz and it allocates 1 GB of the 8 GB of memory that you have equipped in this system. And the RAM, for to be specific, is the Kingston ACR16 D3L S1 KFG. Its speed is PC3 1280, 12,080 at 1600 MHz, which is at its double data rate. You got two sticks of 4 gig RAM, and the cast latency is rated at CL11. The hard drive is a Western Digital Scorpio Blue. Model number is WD10JPVX-22JC3T0. The speed of this is at 5400 RPMs with a 1TB capacity, 8 megabytes of cache, and a latency of 5.5 milliseconds. The wireless NIC in this laptop is the Qualcomm Atheros AR956X BGN, and the speed is up to 300 megabit per second. And for the uh, for the local area network card is the Realtek PCIe Gigabit Family Chip, which is a speed of 10 100 1000 or gigabit. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is featured on this laptop. All right, so taking a look at some of the ports that are featured on this laptop, right here you get two USB 2.0, a drive bay cover which you can take off to install an optional optical drive, your power port, then up here is the A10 logo, a nice large touchpad which you have for multi-adjuster support which is supported in Windows 8 and 8.1 and also Windows 10. Originally a sticker was right here but I decided to take that off. You got number pad, your regular keyboard, power buttons right here, the Acer logo right here, and here is the 15.6 inch display of a native resolution of 1366 by 768. Then right here is your 720p webcam. And then down here you have your power LED, your charging LED. When the battery gets low it'll blink orange. When it's fully charged it'll turn blue once the charge is done. And then Right around here is your microphone. Right here you have your Kensington lock, your fan louvers, VGA, your 10100-1000 Ethernet port, your HDMI, a single USB 3.0, and a headphone jack, which also supports microphone. On the bottom you have five rubber feet, a latch for your battery, some ventilation, the serial number and other nomenclature you may need to know, your two speakers, and also your SD card reader. And on the lid is uh, like a burst aluminum look. So let me shine a flashlight so you can see some of the burst aluminum look that's on it. As you can tell, it also attracts fingerprints. And here are some of the benchmarks. is the webcam test and also the audio test for the built-in microphone. So I'm going to do a couple of different volumes. This would be me whispering. I don't know if you can hear me or not. Now this is my normal voice. And I'm pretty sure you can probably hear me pretty fine. And now this is my loud voice. I'm getting very, very loud. So the microphone might be blasting your ears out by now. End of the video and microphone test. All right, time to go over the battery life. The battery life of this laptop is up to five hours, but depending on the settings, you might be able to squeeze six hours out of it. But for average, I get about 
two to three hours worth of game time and about close to four hours of media time. But again, that depends on the power settings that you're using and the operating system. I'm currently using Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit, so it might be a little different from Windows 8, 8.1, 10, or even Linux. Alrighty, now let's take a listen to the audio of this laptop. At maximum volume. Now that sounds good. So one of the things I really love about this laptop is the price. Because currently you can get it for $430 on TigerDirect.com at the time of this video. And you can get it for $49.99 on Newegg. That would be $499.99. That is. So what are the other things I love about this laptop? Well, I like the fact that it has a quad-core A10 with it, which is great for gaming. With the R6 graphics, you'll be able to play most of your games on medium-high settings, depending on what kind of games you play, whether it be uh, Dirt 3, Metro 2033, Crisis, Skyrim. They were in Skyrim too well with a whole ton of mods, which I'd say not to benchmark because, again, mods. But I also like the fact that the speakers are actually exceptionally decent. And that's one of the key features about this laptop, so you can use it for gaming, maybe some light audio editing, and watching movies. So this laptop is a great all-around laptop, just as is. One of the things that um, I have to grab about is, why doesn't it have more USB 3.0? It's only got one. And another big grip that I have is that there is no hard drive activity LED. But overall, it gets uh, too bad. I'm um, trying to do there nine and a half fingers. <laughs> I kind of can't do a full ten because of the two issues that I had with the lack of a hard drive activity LED. So. Overall, this is a great laptop. I would highly recommend getting it, and there will be more benchmarks coming along, which will be on a Google spreadsheet, which I will do over time. And one of the other things I need to point out is I did put Windows 7 on this laptop, which I will make sure I put in the specifications with the benchmark sheets. So overall, this is a great laptop, and the reason why I dumped Windows 8.1 is because it had a crap ton of bloatware that Acer had put on it. Don't forget to rate and subscribe, and also, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. All the links will be provided below, so you can visit those pages. Other than that, hasta luego.